Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story. South Africa's national beauty pageant has gone deeper into turmoil. The controversy around one of the contestants, now a finalist, Chidema Arechina, is getting bigger with South African governments stepping in. Now in the latest, Chidema Arechina has withdrawn from the beauty pageant ahead of the Saturday final. This comes after the South African government accused the mother of the contestant of fraud and identity theft. From the moment she became a finalist in the South African beauty pageant, Chidema Arechina has been subjected to a torrent of online abuse and xenophobic attacks over her Nigerian heritage. Many, including South African cabinet ministers, have questioned her credentials, and the pageant organizers requested an investigation after uproar. They initially backed Arichina, saying that she is a South African citizen by birth with a valid ID and passport and met all eligibility criteria. Now, the Home Affairs Ministry is investigating the matter. In its reports, the ministry said it has prima facie indications that Arechina's mother might have committed fraud and stolen the identity of a South African woman after the Miss South Africa hopeful was born. The Home Affairs Ministry is now obtaining legal advice on the implications on Arechina's citizenship, adding the contestant did not participate in the alleged unlawful actions as she was an infant at the time. Arechina and her mother had given their written consent to the initial probe. 23-year-old Chidema Arechina was born in Soweto to a Nigerian father and a mother of Mozambican descent. South Africa grants citizenship by birth to anyone born in the country after 1995, and Arechina was born in 2001. Now, she has been witnessing heavy scrutiny, backlash over her identity and questions about her bloodline. It has become a matter of national importance in South Africa. Her nationality has been a hot topic among politicians and celebrities, and even on TV news and radio talk shows in recent weeks. The debate intensified after a video of Arechina surfaced showing her celebrating her success with her Nigerian relatives. This further fueled the argument by many that she was not South African enough. While many came to her defense, the others argued that she should be disqualified over her Nigerian ties. Among the loudest critics was Arts and Culture Minister Gayton McKenzie. His far-right party won 2% of the vote in the May election, where immigration was a key issue. McKenzie earlier said it would be a travesty for the country to be represented globally by someone who identifies more with Nigeria than South Africa. In recent years, South Africa has witnessed an increase in hostility toward foreigners. This is because its people are suffering due to unwavering unemployment. Despite a low economic growth, the country attracts millions of migrants, mainly from other African countries. But the latest pageant controversy has only highlighted South Africa's deep-seated history of xenophobia, particularly towards African immigrants. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Lauren Landau, a senior researcher with the African Center for Migration and Society at the University of Witwatersrand, joining us live from Johannesburg. Thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. Now, Chidema Arechina has received a torrent of online abuse and xenophobic attacks over her Nigerian heritage which has led to her withdrawing from the competition. How does Arachina's experience highlight the challenges faced by immigrants in South Africa, if we can explore the broader issues related to acceptance, citizenship, and the treatment of immigrants? This is a complicated issue. And of course, a beauty pageant is not the most important thing going on in South Africa at the moment but it has crystallized as a series of debates among the South African people and, as you've said, among politicians over who is a South African and who should represent South Africa. What we see in this case is a very interesting one. South Africa has embraced foreign-born uh, musicians, foreign-born sports stars as representative of, of the country at the highest level. But there is something about her, about the, the pageant, about beauty, about her having Nigerian heritage 
that seems to have triggered a debate over what it means to be a South African, who can be a South African. Of course, South Africa is a country of mm. massive diversity, and these sorts of debates uh, have always been just below the surface. Yeah. Uh, what led to the xenophobic backlash against Chidema during the Miss South Africa pageant in terms of the specific incidents and the social media reactions that targeted her based on her heritage? It's hard to say what specific event triggered it, whether it was a, a post, whether it was a flag on her social media, of, or whether it has been a, a sort of broader set of, of issues over the last few years in which politicians, uh, popular figures, etc., have made immigration a central issue. And, and given the symbolism of this, I think people are very sensitive to the idea that someone who is not fully South African or fully loyal to South Africa might represent the country. They said, or they showed, as, as you said, mm. pictures of her celebrating claims from her father about uh, when he was here. There's been questions about her, her parentage. But I think it, it, to some extent, it's not really about what she did or about anything that, that she has uh, represented particularly. It's more that people are putting on her all of these debates over what it means to be a South African and to try to mm. assert a certain type of definition for what it means. Right. And what steps, in your view, can be taken to promote unity, inclusivity and human rights within the pageant and South Africa as a whole? What practical solutions are there to combat xenophobia with a view to the importance of celebrating diversity and a multicultural identity? Right. At the pageant level, it's disappointing that while the, the pageant organizers at first embraced her and defended her, and I think would have allowed her to continue to compete, we didn't see a certain uh, uh, outpouring from politicians. We did to some extent from celebrities saying, look, South Africa is a diverse country. She was born here. She has citizenship. And we need to celebrate uh, this. We've had, we've had Miss South Africans who are white, Miss South Africans who are Indian, Miss South Africans who are mixed race. Mm. This is just part of what it means to be South African. At a broader level, I think there is a need for a kind of family meeting over this. We have, as you mentioned, a minister whose last name is Scottish, accusing her of, of not being South African enough, and to ask questions about what does it take to become mm. a South African? How do we talk about where we're from, mm. what, how we manage this diversity? Those discussions have been ongoing, but clearly we yeah. need to have a, 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 a better and more inclusive debate. Absolutely. Thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa and for your very valued insights on this latest story. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree. A News 18 Network initiative. On the 5th of the 2020 World Cup run by the US, moved across to the West Indies for the new spectacles. Hello, I'm Alison Green, coming to you from Durban, South Africa. Today we have a special show. Start with a report on India's system of the first 
Hello and welcome to First Coast America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C.